It takes great courage to confess you've been mistaken. Mr Ivor Thomas, Member of Parliament for Keithley in Yorkshire, left the Labour Party for reasons which he's now going to tell you. Like so many other people, I thought in 1945 that a Labour government would be the best government to deal with the problems of the time. Like so many other people, I have to admit today that I have been grievously disillusioned. Knowing the immense national effort that would be needed to make good the ravages of a world conflict, I hope that a Labour government would inspire the industrial workers to the tasks of peace, as Mr Churchill had inspired them to the tasks of war. Today it is painfully obvious that Labour has failed to give this inspiration and that only the General's help of free America is saving us from national bankruptcy. Doctrinaire planning and incompetent administration have hamstrung the forces of recovery. Knowing how communism battens on the misery which follows in the wake of a great war, I had hoped that a Labour government pledged to moderate measures of reform would be the best barrier against the evil forces of Marxism sweeping across Europe. Today it is clear that the labour movement is itself too deeply infected with Marxism ever to be an effective barrier against it and is being rushed into courses uh, which its wiser members uh, deplore. Today it is clear uh, that between communism and completed socialism there is no difference. Both lead to a condition of affairs in which the state counts for everything and the individual for nothing. The Labour government has shown that it aims not at levelling up, but at levelling down. Its post-war aim appears to be to make a land fit for zeros to live in. It has created a paradise for the spiv and the speculator, but industry and honesty no longer bring their reward, as used to be the case. It is impossible to build up a healthy society on class envy and class hatred. No leadership has come from the government since 1945. But the authentic voice of Great Britain has still been heard as it was heard after Dunkirk. It has been heard at Fulton, at Zurich, at The Hague, at Hlandidno. And when Mr Church's voice is again able to command action, as it now commands attention, there will be a national revival which will astonish the world.